we talked about tax resin and a non resin we talked about if you are a tax resin what you should do so there's two ways of seizing tax residency um just to give a little bit more differentiation we're not going too much into death in the dta process because it's not really applicable to the isle of man or people living in the isle of man um so the first way to seize tax residency is through the financial migration process or the tax immigration process whatever name you want to call it there's a lot of names out there but this is the still the term that we use and it's recognized in the market too um, so what the financial immigration process involves it involves confirmation with SARS that you are no longer an ordinary resident of South Africa very important in other words plainly put it um, involves confirming with SARS that you have no intention to reside um, in South Africa anymore it's a permanent move abroad or a long-term move abroad very important like I said, there is a South African Reserve Bank implication when it comes to um, tax residency and non residents So once a person has been ceases to be a tax resident of South Africa, the bank account status needs to change to that of a non resident This will also allow you to withdraw your uh, South African retirement interest after you have proven that you cease to be a resident for an uninterrupted period of three years. Very important. This involves obtaining a approved international transfer pin. Jerry alluded to this pin as well, confirming tax compliance and also approving the foreign remittances. So if you want to take out capital amounts out of South Africa, this is where that um, crucial part comes into. Whereas in contrary, DTA is an annual process um, and this is more applicable to people that intend to permanently return to South Africa. How to qualify the DTA, there needs to be a double taxation agreement in force between the two jurisdictions. So that's the most important factor. If there's nothing, DTA relief doesn't exist. But just for information purposes, DTA also involves a bank account status change to that of a non-resident. This requires you to obtain a tax residency certificate each year, confirming that you're seen as a tax resident in, in that jurisdiction where you reside. And then it's an annual SARS challenge per the DTA tiebreaker test. So basically, um, it's a uh, elimination test, if I can say it like that. So the first thing that they look at is where do you have a permanent home available? Let's say you're renting a, uh, uh, let's say, just for example, a place that is a that, that is a DTA, let's say for the UAE, you have a permanent home available there. You don't have one in South Africa, you sold any, everything, um, then you would be seen as a non resident for that year of assessment. It's an annual challenge, so it's based on personal circumstances. But basically, both of these processes will involve a exit tax it will result in tax non-residency a change in bank status and you will require a pin for to transfer funds abroad so a couple of um similarities but two different processes in your case in the isle of man to seize residency the option available is financial immigration <music>